Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com and SketchUp Pro 2020 was just released. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the new features. All right, so let's dive right into this. The first new feature is the renaming of layers. So layers actually never really, it, it wasn't really the right name for layers in SketchUp because in every other program, layers not only control visibility, but they control structure. They protect the entities that are on that layer. But in SketchUp, that's not how it works at all. You have to use groups and components to protect entities. So using the word layers was kind of confusing. So instead, they're now called tags. Now, again, there's like nothing different at all in how they behave. They've literally just been renamed from layers to tags. Now this is all well and good. The only thing I have a problem with is the word tag, like in any other program, implies that you can assign multiple tags to a single object. And of course, as you know, you can't really do that with layers. So uh, that's just a little thing that rubs me the wrong way. Um, and also we have the classifier tool where this icon is a set of tags. Like tell me this is not tags. These look like tags, but, uh, you know, that's the classifier tool. Tags are now what layers used to be. And now I have to go and update like my entire website and all my videos. So, uh, <laughs> but that brings us to the next big feature. And that is the fact that you can now control tags from inside layout. So in fact, the entire SketchUp model panel in layout has been redesigned and you can actually turn uh, tags on and off to control the visibility of the objects in the viewports in layout. So this gives you a huge amount of control over how your viewports look in layout. Although I'm not quite on board with like completely abandoning scenes. So typically I'll create scenes in SketchUp ahead of time and assign those scenes to the viewport in layout. And that's still my recommended way of uh, preparing your model for, for layout. Um, but this just gives you another uh, way to control the visibility of the objects in the viewport. And honestly, I highly suspect that they renamed SketchUp layers to tags because they knew they were implementing this feature. So now you're not going to get confused between layout layers and SketchUp layers. You know, it's going to be tags and layers. So you can't get the two confused. So I have a feeling that was definitely part of the reason why they renamed SketchUp layers to tags. Now with the new SketchUp model panel redesigned, there's a number of new features that we now have. So instead of in the past, when you overrode a single um, property of a viewport, the entire viewport would then become detached from the scene properties. Um, so you're essentially completely controlling that viewport from in layout. But now the properties have been uh, grouped into property sets and you can choose which property sets you want to override. So if you just want to override the camera, you can override the camera in layout and only the camera settings will become overridden from whichever scene you have assigned to that viewport. So you can let the scene drive all the other property sets while just overriding the camera, for example, in layout. So of course you can do this for all the property sets if you wanna override every single property set and you'll see uh, reset buttons over the property sets that are currently overridden and you'll also see a master reset all button at the top of the SketchUp model panel that you can use to reset all of the property sets so they're then you know, driven by the scene once again. Another cool thing is you can relink a single viewport to a different SketchUp model. Whereas in the past, if you relinked a single viewport, all the viewports that reference that model would also become updated to the new reference. So this is kind of like in SketchUp when you have a component and multiple components and you right click on one and select make unique. This is just like that. So you can make a viewport unique and have a different reference um, because in the past you had to like delete it 
you have to insert a new model, reconfigure the whole viewport and kind of start from scratch. So this just gives you uh, more flexibility in how you relink your models. Now, moving back to SketchUp, one of the big features we have now is a distinction between hidden geometry and hidden objects. So this is really cool. We now have the ability to show hidden geometry separately from hidden objects. Now objects are now um, officially being defined uh, as groups, components, or section planes. And of course, these are both style properties. So you can configure your styles to have either hidden geometry or hidden objects or both visible, um, or I shouldn't say visible. It's, it's the, the entities are still gonna be hidden. It's just when you have those hidden entities shown, um, you'll see like a dotted or dashed outline of those entities. But of course, no matter what the style is set to, you can always go to the view menu and toggle hidden objects or hidden geometry um, just on the fly. And now that we have uh, hidden objects uh, distinguished from hidden geometry, we now have the ability to save the visibility state of all objects in your model in any scene. So you may be aware that scenes have pretty much always had the ability to save hidden geometry state. However, it only worked for the topmost level entities. If there was something that was nested inside of a group or component, the scene would completely ignore it. So uh, it was very confusing. Personally, for a long time, I didn't even realize this. I thought I was saving, you know, the, the hidden state of certain things into a scene. And then when I reactivate the scene, it wasn't toggling and I was really confused. Well, now we have a great uh, new feature that will save the hidden state of groups, components, and section planes in a scene. So hidden geometry is still gonna behave the same way. So for instance, if you are trying to hide edges between like um, some walls and a floor, obviously you want those edges to be permanently hidden. You don't wanna have to you know, hide the edge, go into a scene, update it, go to your next scene, hide the edge, update it, so on and so forth. That would be like a major pain to have to deal with. So hidden geometry is still treated as um, you know, a, a, a global edit to the model. It's not actually saved in the scenes unless it's on the parent um, context. So the highest level context, if you have loose entities, you can save their hidden state um, in a scene. But now just remember hidden objects, you can save those to a scene. I'm really excited about this feature. So I see the biggest benefit of this feature being that there's a lot of times where I will create a layer to control the visibility of a single object. Um, and now that I can hide objects directly, I don't necessarily need to create redundant layers just to control the visibility of a single object. Oh, see, I call them layers. They're not called layers anymore, they're tags. Um, so that's gonna take a while to get used to. Um, so yeah, you don't, so tags are gonna be, continue to be great for toggling visibility of multiple objects that are located in multiple locations throughout your model. Where, um, however, being able to toggle the visibility of a single entity, a single object is gonna be a great uh, feature to have in our toolbox to be able to use. And to help us with this new feature, the outliner has also been updated. We have a new column with a visibility icon um, to help us quickly hide um, groups and components without having to right click and uh, find the hide command. And you'll notice that objects will appear differently um, depending on whether their tag is visible or hidden or when the object is visible or hidden. And actually that's another change to the outliner behavior. So in the past, when we had layers, if you hid the layer, that object would completely disappear from the outliner. But now all objects are always going to appear in the outliner. It's just that um, objects that are hidden directly will have their name appear in italics and light gray but the object icon and the eye icon will still remain black. But if the object has a hidden tag, it's 
the whole thing is just gonna appear in a light gray color. So we have those two visual cues. I find it a little confusing. It's probably gonna take a little while for me to get used to identifying what those visual cues mean, but now we're gonna have all the objects visible. Now, personally, I wasn't too happy with this feature because when I hide a tag, I want those objects to disappear from the outliner because they've disappeared from my workspace. So I like the outliner in the workspace to be consistent um, and symmetrical. So I really wish we had kept that same behavior, but I would have been happy if they had added maybe some functionality to the filter feature. You know, instead of just filtering by name, wouldn't it be cool if we could filter by attribute or you know, tag. I could see maybe, you know, a future feature request being, you know, we could have a custom filter in the outliner for, you know, if the tag is uh, hidden, don't show it, you know, something like that. And, and all the other attributes that we assign to our objects, it'd be great to be able to filter all of those things right in the outliner. All right, so the next feature we have to the SketchUp modeling workflow is object manipulation. So we got additional inferences that we can call upon when we use the move tool. Um, now this is really cool. So a lot of times the bounding box has a, a good representation of different points we wanna snap to. And by hovering over an object when we're, when we're trying to move it, you'll see some new inference points appear at the corners of the bounding box. And you can snap to those and use those to, um, to move the object. Now, in addition to that, we have some hidden um, inference points that you can toggle by tapping the down arrow multiple times. So um, there's a number of different inferences. We have the corners, which is the default one. You tap the down arrow again and you get midpoints along the edges of the bounding box. We have uh, center points of the, the faces of the bounding box. And we also have an object center inference point to snap to. So this is really cool. This is just, I love features like this because it's very like SketchUp-y. It's very like, it's non-obtrusive. It still fits right into all the existing SketchUp features. So I really love seeing um, new features like this. And then we have a few minor features, but I felt like they were definitely worth mentioning. Uh, one being in layout. How many times have you done this where you've been working on a viewport and you accidentally double click on a viewport and now you're in model, you know, you're editing the, the uh, model space view and you screw up your scene because you already had the scene controlling the camera and you screw it up and now you have to like exit and hit control Z to undo it. Well, guess what? Now you can actually go into the layout preferences um, and disable the uh, option. It's called enable SketchUp model editing found under the general section of the preferences. And that will lock your viewports and prevent you from being able to double click into model space. So that's awesome. I'm gonna have that enabled pretty much all the time because I'm always using scenes um, to assign to my viewports. So that's a great new feature. We also have um, a few things I wanna mention. The extension warehouse has been completely revamped about a month ago. Um, so, you, so you may have noticed that already. There were a lot of performance issues that I was noticing in the past, um, but it seems to be doing a lot better now. And then we have, uh, if you right click on an object in the outliner, you'll now see an option called show hidden tags. So this is cool. If you have an object that's hidden in the workspace via tag, so if the tag is hidden and you can't see the object in your workspace, obviously, it's still gonna be shown in the outliner, but instead of, like if you get confused and you can't remember which tag was assigned to that object, you can actually just right click on the object directly in outliner and select show hidden tags and it'll toggle that tag back on for you. So I think that's a cool little trick. We also have a uh, rename by double clicking. So just double click on the name in the outliner and that's going to um, allow you to rename the, the, the group or component that, that you're working on. And we have some new unit types, yards, gallons, and liters have been added as unit types. So that's it, that's my summary of the SketchUp Pro 2020 
Um, new features, obviously there's a lot of bug fixes as well. I'll have a link in the description for the um, official like release notes. If you're, if you're like me and you love reading all the nitty gritty details, um, I'll have the link to that in the description as well as my written tutorial showing, uh, not tutorial, but written review kind of going over everything I talked about in this video. And the last thing I wanna mention is I, oh my God, I've been working on an update for SketchUp to layout for like years now. It's, it's really embarrassing how long it's been taking me to get this done. Um, but I, uh, <laughs> for instance, the name of the file that I'm working on is called SketchUp to layout 2018. Okay, so that's that might give you an idea of how long this has taken me. So just for context, I wrote the original version in 2015. So I had intended on updating it for 2018 and it's still not done. Uh, however, I'm making a lot of progress right now. Um, I, I haven't really said this publicly, but I'm gonna expect that I will have it ready in maybe two or three months. Um, there's a huge amount of new material that goes over a lot of SketchUp basics. Now that was something that I completely omitted in my first version. Um, you had to kind of have a certain level of knowledge of SketchUp. With this new edition, it's gonna be like a complete, like you don't even have to know anything about SketchUp or layout and you can take this book and like completely master SketchUp and layout and um, you know, produce construction documents. So um, I'm really excited about that. I'm gonna link to that in the description as well. Uh, if you wanna sign up to my email list where you get updates and I can keep you informed on when that's gonna be released. Other than that, I am very excited about the new version of SketchUp Pro and um, I think we got some some more good stuff coming our way. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and click that like button if you liked this video and I'll see you in the next video.